Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are here with uh, Sylvain, uh, who is our next speaker. Uh, I saw he's uh, pretty impressed, uh, pretty impress, uh, impressing uh, bio in the EuroPython uh, website. And I'm very interested uh, with your talk, I have to say. Uh, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from uh, west of France, actually. Okay. And how's the weather uh, there? <laughs> uh actually it's uh so so <laughs> we are close to the ocean here so uh, uh it changes every 10 minutes <laughs> i'll tell you uh, if if sun is coming through the windows <laughs> uh, yeah uh please uh, check uh, okay uh you're sharing and eh? whenever uh, you want uh, you can start perfect well thanks uh thanks a lot for uh hosting this this event um, I'm, uh, I, I want to wish you good morning, good good afternoon, good good evening for everyone. And uh, well, I'm I'm Sylvain Marier. I work as an analytics and, and AI uh, uh, engineer at, at Schneider Electric in uh, in Grenoble, France, uh, where I'm not located right now, by the way. <laughs> uh, and uh, well, in this talk, I'll uh, I'll introduce you to uh, to a library that is named PyTest Cases and. Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll show you how to use it um, to, to hopefully make powerful tests and uh, reproducible benchmarks. Um, in, in this presentation, I'll, I'll start with a, a very a quick reminder of PyTests, as I assume that the audience knows uh, about uh, this already. Um, then I'll introduce you to how PyTest cases works, uh, the basics, uh, mechanisms, and then uh, I'll switch to more advanced topics for the end of the talk. Uh, okay, so with PyTest first, well, it's, as um, most of you know, it's it's a V test framework for Python, extremely popular now. And uh, the reason it, why it's popular is really um, it's its philosophy. Um, it's, it's meant for you to not write extra lines of code. Uh, you just focus of, on what is interesting. So you, you can really reduce the boilerplate and copy paste code in tests to almost zero. Um, and, and how can you do that? Why uh, is, does it work? It's based on three pillars. Uh, the first one is that uh, a test is just a plain old Python function, such as this uh, test foo function here. Um, second, um, you can parameterize tests by decorating this, this function and, uh, and telling in the decorator what is the name of the parameter and the range of values. And with just that uh, line, uh, your test will be, will generate here two tests actually, and the value of the parameter will be injected as an argument in your test function. So extremely simple. And third, and it's really the killer feature of PyTests, um, it's uh, your, your tests can reuse uh, shared tools, objects, features, um, and that's the place where you actually handle all the complexity that sometimes you need, uh, to, you know, setting up a database, tearing down, etc. Uh, this is named fixtures, and actually there are many of them built in uh, the PyTest library. Um, one e example that is quite easy to get is the temp deer fixture. Uh, so you just declare that you use it by adding it uh, to the signature of your test. And for you, when your test will run, it will create uh, this, this particular fi fixture will create a temporary di di directory uh, before your test runs uh, in a setup phase. Then it will inject here the, the path to this uh, temporary di directory. And when your test ends, uh, it will delete it. Uh, and you, when a fixture exists already, you just have to call it its name to get all of that. Uh, so this is really powerful. These three pillars, uh, plus many other uh, features uh, and also great uh, ID integration, for example, in PyCharm, makes it really, really easy to, uh, to create tests and, and it's actually fun. Um, maybe two other things to mention for PyTests. If you don't know them, have a look at them, they are cool. Uh, one is the fact that you can write uh, conftest.py files that can be placed anywhere to declare common uh, fixtures uh, or other things. 
And uh, another thing that is really also another reason why PyTest is so popular is that uh, there is a huge range of customization hooks uh, that uh, make it very easy uh, for you to write plugins. Uh, and this is why there is a huge list of plugins. And this is why I'm presenting today an, yet another plugin. <laughs> So let's uh, switch to uh, the core of this presentation. Um, PyTest cases, well, it's it's a plugin for PyTest that I started to write in, in 2018. Um, and its main goal was really to make PyTest easier to use in a very particular context of uh, tests for data science. Um, uh, I'll, I'll explain later why um, tests for data science or analytics libraries uh, are have some peculiarities. And uh, a secondary goal that actually popped up on the way is, is actually to make PyTest easier to use in general. So um, the idea is that while developing PyTest cases, I created mechanisms that were not there and, and that I now make available uh, directly also so that you can use them without using uh, PyTest cases. Uh, I mean, without using the, the core of, of PyTest cases. It's a mature project. Uh, this is uh, the collection of badges that you can find on the on the welcome page. And uh, I have to mention the the, uh, the users, uh, a small community, but very active uh, with uh, a great uh, lot of ideas. And also, I want to thank everyone who has been reporting uh, issues uh, because it helped the uh, library become more uh, mature. Um, okay, so the use case that uh, actually was at the origin of, of this uh, library is, is to test analytics and AI libraries, um, such as, for example, machine learning libraries uh, for, I don't know, predictive maintenance. Uh, this is the, the kind of libraries that we do at Schneider Electric uh, for forecasting energy consumption or production. Um, so these libraries, machine learning algorithms, uh, they usually work on tables. Um, so if you are not familiar with the library, uh, the reference library for tables uh, in, in Python, it's, uh, there is one named uh, NumPy for matrices and another one named Panda uh, or Pandas, I don't know the name, how to pronounce it, that is uh, the uh, tables, basically. Um, and uh, these objects are complex Python objects because they represent you know, um, tables with pot potentially hundreds of rows and columns. Um, and uh, you, you cannot usually set them up uh, with a single line. You, you require a few lines to, to, to create the object and manipulate it. And these are um, the kind of inputs that we use for our tests. And uh, we can source uh, most of these inputs from uh, files uh, uh, or uh, other kind of storage. Um, and so this is uh, one uh, way to, to to create the test, for example, we, we get feedback from uh, you know production uh, software uh, where some some table was not working, and we we capture that in a file and we include it in the in the tests. Um, but we also sometimes want to uh, you know push the limits uh, of the algorithm, and in that case, uh, it's it's better to simulate to create a, a table uh, programmatically. Uh, controlling everything, uh, you know, the, the correlations in the columns, etc. So in that case, we, we rather uh, need code. So that's at least two ways to source the uh, test data. Uh, and there are many, uh, of course, many others. Uh, and another need uh, that I mentioned at, at the bottom is, is the need to benchmark. So you, you, you might tell me that this is not really testing. Um, uh, however, um, when writing benchmarking libraries uh, or tooling in the past, I, I ended up uh, uh, finding out that I was recreating almost everything that was already in PyTest. So maybe there was something to do here uh, because a benchmark is, is nothing more than you know running uh, several versions or several algorithms on several data sets. Uh, so that's, that, that resembles very, very much tests. Okay, so to, to uh, go a little uh, more um, uh, detailed here, um, this uh, complexity that I was mentioning is really, uh, you can see it on this uh, uh, slide. Um, it's basically that uh, PyTest was meant 
to parameterize your tests with things that are quite small to, to write, such as this uh, tuple here at the top. And uh, for uh, data frames and, I mean, data science in general, we end up with uh, things that cannot uh, be very small. You, you know, um, first, uh, you, you have to, to create objects, but then you, you usually cannot do it, in, do it in a single line so that you then you add uh, other lines to say, oh, I want to drop this uh, part of the table, blah, blah, blah. So you, you manipulate it with uh, several lines. Um, second, um, once you have done all of that, how will the next person looking at your code know what you've done? So you, you, you need somehow to, to be able to document this uh, parameter value. Um, which is uh, really not convenient uh, in the to, in the decorator for pytest mark parameterize, um, and uh, 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 besides um, the the as I was mentioning earlier, this this example that you see on screen is uh, a script that simulates uh, a table, but sometimes you want to uh, you know read it from a database, and in that case you would like to use a fixture uh, setting up the database beforehand and, and draw your sample from this database or a file system. Uh, and finally, the, the, the ID uh, of, of the case uh, of, the of, of the parameter is, becomes very important because you end up having many uh, data frames, more than 20 for, for a single test function, and uh, and you need to have a very quick way to you know check uh, which one is is not working. Okay, so yeah, it did not seem really right the, to use uh, the pytest mark parameterized decorator uh, for that. Um, so the idea uh, behind uh, pytest case is really to transform this iterable of parameter values that you see in the decorator here um, in functions not fixtures, just functions. Um, you see that these functions, by default, you have to prefix them with case underscore. And the functions, the, the only contract they have is, um, is to return the parameter value to use. Um, so since these functions are created um, separately from your tests, then the decorator for your test uh, is a bit different. It's shown at the bottom here. It becomes uh, parameterized with cases. And um, you still have to remind what is the parameter name to inject, same as, as before. So here it's name. Um, but uh, now you have uh, other uh, fields, other arguments here in this decorator to declare where the collection of cases should be listed from and possibly how to filter them. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, later. Um, uh, another thing that you see on the screen is that uh, now it's um, we have a doc string uh, for free because we create functions. So we can document our parameter values out of the box. OK, so what about IDs and marks? So. Uh, for those uh, familiar with PyTests, uh, IDs are usually generated automatically by PyTest, but sometimes you, would, you want to control them, uh, especially when your object is complex because uh, it might not be represented uh, in a way that you like. And uh, you can pass these IDs as an either an iterable or a callable uh, at, in the decorator. Um, another way to pass this ID is really to attach it to the value directly. It's not shown here, but it would be appearing here between this comma and marks. You, you can customize the ID. Uh, and uh, you can also customize marks uh, on, on a parameter value uh, one by one. So here I declare the second parameter, the parameter world, to be marked as skipped. Uh, and this is done through the uh, pytest.param. So as you see, it's it's feasible. Uh, you can do it, but it's it's less elegant than the previous uh, screen. Um, so how it's how is it done in pytest cases? Well, the default ID is is directly extracted from the function name uh, after the prefix. So here it would be Euro Python uh, lowercase. Uh, but you can also customize it with um, uh, a decorator uh, named case. Uh, 
where you can you know uh, use this uh, argument name id here with earth uh, so that's the two ways that you can use to to customize the ideas and for marks it's even uh, easier if it if possible you you just use the way pytest uh, allows you to to mark uh, test functions uh, the same marks can be used on case functions so pytest.mark.skip, the decorator, can be uh, applied on this case world function, and it will be skipped. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, parameter, parameterization and fixtures. In PyTest, parameters, so we here, the EuroPython 2021 parameter, you cannot um, recursively parameterize it. So you cannot say, I want EuroPython 2021 and then EuroPython 2022. Uh, if you want to do that, you have to expand uh, this in, in the list of, of parameters. This is a one-level one uh, list. And uh, also you cannot say that uh, one of those requires a fixture. And I mean, it's, it's for a reason. I mean, you, you would not even know how to use it. Um, but you cannot even inject a fixture as directly as a parameter value. And this use case is more frequent. Those um, you can do uh, with, um, with PyTest cases. On, so your case functions, such as uh, the one on the left, um, you can apply. Uh, it's the same idea as before with the skip mark. Actually, you can mark a case to be parameterized. And it will just work the same way uh, as a test function. Um, so that's for. Um, so here we generate two parameters: one that will contain the world, the, the string world zero, and the second will will contain the string world one. And uh, for the for fixtures, it works as well. Um, you and it's all also the same way that you uh, inject fixtures in in test functions. Um, you uh, declare in the signature of your case that uh, there is a fixture here, and uh, then you can use it. So in in that uh, dummy example, I I require the fixture that I was uh, telling you about at the beginning of this presentation, the temp dear fixture. And um, I say that this, uh, this fixture, I want to extract the base name of the temporary directory. And I want to use that as a parameter. And last but not least, I don't know if you will use that often, but some users already reported that they use that. Uh, you can recurse. So uh, you can actually parameterize a case with cases. Uh, it becomes a bit hard to read. Um, okay, so a few properties of, of cases. Um, um, the functions uh, are, are lazy, so that they, are, they will be called just before your test executes, just as fixtures, actually. And the case functions that require fixtures will be transformed into fixtures, otherwise PyTest would not know how to handle them. Uh, and they will therefore be also set up just before your, your test runs. A second uh, interesting property is caching. Uh, if, um, if one of these uh, case function results is needed at uh, several places in the uh, PyTest uh, framework, uh, for example, for other plugins, uh, the case function will not be called several times. This is very important because uh, you usually install other plugins, and sometimes these, plugin, these plugins uh, uh, grab uh, arg values from uh, parameterized tests. So it's it's important to not spend again some time to you know uh, look up the database or recreate an example that you already had in hand. Okay, let me talk uh, very uh, quickly because time flies uh, about collection of of cases. Um, by default, the initial idea was to say, okay, let's be very strict and separate two files: one for the tests and one for the cases, so that we are very clear. So that's still used as the default. Otherwise, personally, I, I use it very less often than the next slide. Um, still, it's, it's worth mentioning. So if your test file is named test foo, um, then you just have to create a test a file named test foo cases or a, a cases foo, whatever is your preference. Um, 
And if you do this, uh, you do not have to declare anything in the parameterized with, with cases decorator. Uh, it will look up all the cases in this, uh, in this module. Uh, more interesting and actually suggested by one uh, user uh, in the in, in the repository. I, I want to thank him uh, a lot because it really opened uh, the the possibilities. Is that you can now um, uh, also specify a, a module or a module name uh, to grab the cases from and uh, uh, relative works. So uh, here I use dots to say just use this module. And you can use these these cases that are uh, written just before the test, or you can uh, you know uh, use a class as a namespace uh, to contain other cases, um, and and in that case as well, it's you can reference a class. And moreover, you can actually uh, grab cases from several places, uh, so modules, classes, or even functions directly. Here, I reference a function, a case function directly. On top of this uh, collection, I see that I have five minutes less left, so I will uh, really skim through this one. Uh, on, on top of this, uh, there are many uh, tools uh, such as um, uh, different prefix uh, support, uh, tags uh, for filtering, and uh, callable filters with a built-in uh, library of filters. Uh, all of these allow you to, you know, multiplex your cases. So uh, you, you, put all your, you can put all of your cases in a single file, but still have test functions, grab the ones that they are interested in. Uh, finally, uh, well, you can use uh, parameterize with cases to parameterize fixtures. Uh, this requires uh, the fixture decorator provided by PyTest cases. And uh, you can also, um, uh, you there is a built-in uh, fixture uh, that is named current cases that you can use to know the function and the ID of the case that was injected in here. If you want to do some, you know, debugging breakpoint, uh, putting a breakpoint is easy with that. Okay, um, now let me uh, jump to uh, advanced topics. Um, so very shortly, um, PyTest cases could not be possible without major improvements in the PyTest core mechanisms. And these are made available independently of what I explained before. Um, so I, I invite you to check the documentation. Uh, in particular, there is an, an enhanced parameterized decorator, an enhanced fixture decorator, and a concept of fixture union that I will talk about a bit later. Um, PyTest cases was created with uh, a few design choices that, um, not to you know, disturb or hack into PyTest too much. So I tried at the very beginning to say, okay, I will just modify the functions from the user and inject things inside there or remove bar, uh, arguments uh, in there uh, so that I don't, I don't mess with PyTest too much. Uh, in the end, I, I ended up messing with PyTest later on, but for uh, many uh, features, I still uh, just wrap uh, the functions from the user. And this is done uh, using a library that I wrote uh, separately that is named makefun, uh, that, is, uh, that you can see as a, an enhanced version of func tools that allows you to dynamically modify a, a function, uh, adding arguments, removing arguments, things like that. Um, one, uh, I, I will not have the time to explain these this, uh, graphs. So um, uh, one challenge that was solved, uh, um, and that was a major challenge, uh, is the concept of fixture union. Uh, in PyTest, everything is a cross product. Uh, tests are parameterized, depend on fixtures, they depend themselves on other fix fixtures that are parameterized, and this all of this can be represented as a, as a graph. Uh, and and basically, PyTest does, grabs everything and does a cross product of, of all the combination, and that's your test node uh, list. And this um, limits the capability that uh, I I wanted in PyTest uh, cases uh, to have some parameters to 
require some fixtures, but not uh, all of the parameters. Um, so I ended creating this mechanism of fixture union that is basically the ability to uh, create a cross product plus another cross product plus another cross product. Uh, and if you want a detailed explanation uh, and with examples, there is one in the in the uh, documentation page. Finally, to conclude the the last minute on benchmarks, um, if this if such a table looks familiar, a table where I don't know it's research paper, for example, uh, you know you've you've got data sets uh, for each row and and uh, and and then challengers, for example, algorithms you know, um, uh, with different variants. Um, here, this is a polynomial regression with uh, two uh, degrees, one degree, two. Um, and you, you you want a results table like that, you know, with some kind of uh, evaluation protocol providing uh, error metrics. Um, well, this is actually feasible with PyTest cases. Uh, you just have to see um, this the evaluation protocol as a test. Um, so in, in the figure that I that you have on the slide, um, the evaluation protocol is is the test uh, that is uh, at, the, at the middle. Um, and um, in here, it will receive one algorithm, one challenger, that will be a case. For example, you can prefix it algo underscore. It will also, also receive a data set that you can prefix data. Both will be cases. Um, but with two different parameterization uh, to grab both prefix independently. And then once injected in the, in the test, you can do whatever you want. For example, fit the model and then create performance metric, et cetera. And then you grab it and dump it to a file. And that uh, creates your, your table. Um, if you want to do that more efficiently, you can use PyTest Harvest, which is another uh, plugin that I wrote for PyTest that is just meant for that. Okay, um, now uh, this is time for, for questions. Thanks uh, for watching. Oh, uh, I think that uh, it was a very interesting talk. We'll have some questions. Uh, I will uh, put one or two here, and I think that uh, there will be a, a big uh, discussion in the breakout room. Uh, yeah. after <laughs> so uh, how is uh, scoping done session modular function uh, in relation uh, to laziness and uh, caching for cases ah so cases uh, are uh, function scope only so it's it's like a parameter so yeah therefore we can rely on fixtures that have all the other kind of scopes because they are bigger, but cases are a uh, function scope. Yeah. Okay, and another one is uh, about the case functions, name rule. Why not the decorator just like PyTest fixture? Uh, sorry, say it again. I did not get that. Uh, about the case function, name yeah. rule. Why not to use decorator just like PyTest fixture? Ah, uh, decorator of a library. Yeah, um, so I actually use part of Decorator that I extracted in a library that is named MakeFun now. Um, basically, there was a, in Decorator, there was several things uh, mixed, uh, the capability to create a Decorator and the capability to create a dynamic function. And basically, those two capabilities, I, I would say, um, um, I created independent libraries for both. So you can look at deco patch for deco decorator and make fun for dynamic uh, function creation. Uh, because uh, most of the time, I just wanted to create a function, not to create a decorator. Uh, so I would say that I uh, I relied on the, on the, the, the great work that was done in, in decorator and also in at because of the same code, almost the same code was written in at as well. Uh, it's now in make fun. Okay, and uh, I think that uh, this is it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sylvain. I, I like very much your talk. <laughs> and Thanks, uh, I think that we can uh, continue the discussion in the breakout room because there are many questions. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks very much for welcoming me. Bye-bye.
weil 